great. All right, thank you too much, too much. The very first thing I want to do, of course, is thank our sponsor. So um, everybody who knows Richie Work back there, he's been coming for a little bit, and uh, he's with the IBEW. Uh, yeah, so thank you for the things, right? <laughs> okay, so let me get a quick rundown. So the IBEW is the International Brotherhood of Electric Workers. So Local Union 357 has been a part of the community for over 80 years, starting with the Hoover Dam in 1931. Local 357 has been providing a quality workforce for the electrical industry here in Southern Nevada. And the IBEW is the right choice for you and all of your electrical needs. Currently, the IBEW is working on remodeling the new um, downtown Grand and remodeling the old City Hall, which, of course, is going to be home to the new Zappos family. And they are currently giving weekly tours of their nonprofit college accredited apprenticeship training facility. So take the tour, become a member. If you want to enroll, uh, email Rich. The email is right below us, right here, for you people online. And uh, check out IBEW357.org. And if you see him around, pat him on the back for the beer and the support. Thanks, Richie. Appreciate it. This is thick, yeah. thick, as, thick as honey is me now, so okay. Um, but welcome yeah, to the News welcome. Roundtable, everybody. I am the CTO at TickyCake.com and your host for the Downtown Podcast this evening. Uh, to my right, uh, my far right, we have Frankie Tees of FrankieTees.com. Um, to my less right, we have our beautiful co-host, <laughs> Melissa. Oh. And then to my, well, not less, just in proximity wise. She's physically yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, just can't be fair. Um, anyways, and then Jason Fraser here is from Luxor. We're going to be popping bottles of champagne with him after we hear about his company. But let's start by uh, talking about this big Project 100. So our own Zach Ware from episode 13 just placed an order for 100 Teslas. Uh, everybody's been talking about that. Um, the goal of Project 100 is to let downtown Vegas residents ditch their cars and increase serendipity. So Melissa, what else do you know about this project that we can talk about? Um, it's pretty interesting. So basically it utilizes an app to have a car either brought to you to pick you up from your, your area in downtown or to use a car if you need to go uh, out to maybe get groceries or something like that. There's bike sharing as well. And there's some shuttle services that I heard about. So you basically pay a monthly membership that's just similar to um, your monthly car payment or something like that. We haven't gotten figures on that yet. Okay. But it, it allows you access to all of these cars, 100 Teslas. And they said that they're going to be adding more to the fleet as well. So not just the Teslas. But, I mean, electric cars are pretty cool. Um, right. But basically, when you use the app, it'll, like, you have the choice of, it'll ask you if you're just doing a quick trip or if you're... You're either going downtown, you're going to residential, which is considered two miles outside of downtown, or you're going to the greater Las Vegas area, or if you're going outside of Vegas, and they'll give you those options. But I think being able to get picked up from wherever you want, kind of similar to a taxi, yeah. but better, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think it's way, yeah, I think it's going to be able to. So what kind of infrastructure do they have to build to make this all work? Um, they said that uh, for like housing 100 cars is kind of an issue in the first place. So that's kind of something to bring along. And then... Um, Bringing the, the application to integrate all of that is, is going to be interesting too, you know, and also the drivers and just so you can drive or have someone pick. It. It's very interesting. It sounds a little too much. They said that ordering the cars was the easiest part. So okay. it's going to be downhill from there. <laughs> all right, so let's shift the conversation over to Frankie. So talk to us about ebooks. I guess sure. publishing is changing. Sure, yeah. I've just published two ebooks this year. So, round right, congrats. Round of yeah. I, I, I panned it. I am a professional pander. No, uh, but yeah, it's it's getting easier. It's I'm I'm somewhere. This these books are a synopsis of what articles I've done on the Mac, which there's no uh, shortage of entertainment to cover here in Vegas, as you know. But what's interesting about them is it's somewhere between self-publishing and publishing. Okay. It's our reels. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how legitimate is it? Well, it's legitimate. You can't steal it. Online, right. it's not a PDF. Okay. So I'm an author. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people, it is changing. Publishing is changing. So when I first moved here, I worked for a major uh, publication for a couple articles. And I could see it was going to be really long time right. before I was at Robin Leach level. That's a joke. <laughs> I'll never be at Robin Leach level. 
But I mean, come on, he's been a journalist for 50 years. But you know what I'm saying? So there's not a lot of hiring either. So right. I went ahead and went the independent way because I had a little name as a producer of burlesque shows and stuff like that and a swing dance instructor. And I'm coming from Portland, Oregon, land of DIY. Mm -hmm. So when I saw your podcast, I was like, Good. need yeah. to meet their audience. You're like, I got to get, <laughs> get in on that. All right, well, just... we're happy to have you here. Any quick, Thank quickly, you. where should people go check it out? What are your books? FrankieTease.com. Okay, FrankieTease.com. And the book is The Best of Frankie Tees Magazine. Like All right. Volume I one like and two. It. All right, so this book has been changing TicketCake.com recently. We used it to figure out why we didn't, why, or we actually used it to figure out how little we did know about our customer, even though we thought <laughs> we thought we knew him pretty well. So there's some really cool stuff in here, and I wanted to talk to you about, uh, you know, your company. I want, you, I definitely want to do some champagne and ribbons, but tell us, um, what's give me the elevator pitch. What's awesome. Luxor all well, about? Okay, so Luxor started. Uh, Probably a little over two and a half years ago, originally we were an accelerator program uh, for product. Um, unlike other accelerator programs that tend to focus on building a better pitch and helping provide you with a network, we've focused on helping teams really build value into their product by understanding deeply who their user is and what their user needs. Um, we wanted to do something more scalable. We realized that having an accelerator program was not going to make us money while we slept. <laughs> right. um, you know, it's not the kind of business that can make change all over the world. And so we started to package uh, sort of the core things that we taught in that program. And now that's in this book. Um, and we've been selling these now to other accelerator programs who are using this as curriculum in their programs to sort of accentuate what they've already got. You know, they might teach okay. business model canvas and they might have a bunch of people, you know, mentors and things like that. But this is the product oriented yeah. component. Well, you know, what was so awesome is this first visual thing we did, you know, we broke out uh, sheets of paper with everybody. We, we had stick figures and they were like, okay, let's imagine stuff. And it was interesting uh -huh. how our, our visuals of the customer were so different, like what they did in their free time. And that kind of leads you to see how different paths might be going the wrong way. And mm -hmm. so, you know, these two, these two, uh, you know, like hand drawn things up there, that's, uh -huh. that's going to be replaced soon enough with mm -hmm. our, our version, of, uh, Pat Paul Potential is what we named him. You, got, you actually got to make a fictional name for your yes for your right. uh, for your fake customer. But it was a great exercise, and I'm really glad you guys are here. So fantastic! Thank you so much. All right, how do you feel about champagne? Uh, champagne is great. Hey, what about what champagne? about uh, gigantic scissors? I love blades. Anything with a blade, you know. Oh, then we have <laughs> just the blade. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, careful. <laughs> Alright, to Luxor. Yeah! Gina, yeah. you wanna pop this? Yeah, no, that's 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 the best part. Alright. Yeah! Alright, Okay. All right. So we have a special guest today. For our interview, we have an Emmy Award winning news anchor who is also the most experienced, most senior, and most well known anchor in Las Vegas. Self described as a huge tech fan, which has been confirmed by Mike Cow. He said he looked at your <laughs> office and you do have every tablet and every version of every tablet sitting on it. So I like that. And uh, today, so uh, you guys might recognize him from 8 News Now. He's one of the main anchors there. And um, he's done some of the tech stories that covered downtown Las Vegas. So please put your hands together for David Corvassier. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hi, right, Dave. So, you know. You know, we play hardball around are, are here. Are we live? Is this live TV now? Yeah, you're live. Oh, wow, okay. <clears throat> Actually, well, it'll be edited. Make so up. I'll edit my <laughs> stupid things, but I'll find all of yours, so don't worry. All right, but this is the uh, this is the table of truth. We play hardball around here. I like so it. I, don't, I want you to know that you're not getting off the hook. Okay. There's none of your fancy makeup people, <laughs> none of your legions of fans, right? No, I'm just kidding. I love giving softballs, okay, no, no, man. No, that's softballs. cool. That's cool. I can take it. Okay, so what do you think of the audience? What do you think of the Very crowd? Very nice. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah this is great. It's a good, a good crowd. Very nice. Come show up. 
Okay, and what do you think about downtown Vegas? What do you know? Have you done the tour? Look, you know, downtown Vegas has, has struggled for so long. I think the whole community is excited about seeing Tony move in and, and get the support and the supporting you guys. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's going to transform the downtown. People are really excited about it. Good. I'm glad. What is, so, I mean, tell me, what do you hear? What's well, we, outside you know, of these walls? Uh, well, we've covered it several times on our news about your organization, about uh, the various uh, offshoots and the entrepreneurial spirit down here. The, just the fact that uh, different businesses downtown are being affected by Tony's moving into the old city uh, headquarters. Right. You know, that just has a ripple effect. And, and um, you know, th there's been a number of stories over the last couple of weeks that we've done. Um, th they're all encouraging to us because we've seen... The Las Vegas downtown as kind of a seedy place in some right. areas, and and it's nice to see it come around. Yeah, no, I, I mean that yeah. makes sense. Well, so have you? Uh, when is the last time you did like a little podcast like this? I mean, is it? Uh, I mean, do you remember back when you were small time, or is it just, <laughs> just not a not thing? <laughs> You know, uh, I haven't done a lot of podcasts, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nor do I often get to see a live audience. I'm, you know, looking at a camera most of the time. Yeah. So, uh, although I do a lot of live events as an MC or an, or an event producer, um, it's it's neat to have people right here in the room staring at me yeah. with two eyes. And and you do a lot of voices because I, you know, what I really liked about our pre-interview is that uh, you have a little bit of entrepreneur spirit. Um, you definitely right. had your own kind of brand. So, tell us about what you're doing as an entrepreneur and what you've learned when it well, comes to your voiceover. Well, that's what this logo is. I, I go by Corvo in the voiceover universe, and I, I started doing uh, voiceovers about seven or eight years ago because I saw a retirement heading my way in the next five, ten years, and I wanted something like a transition from broadcasting into something that I could do anywhere um, in my bedroom, in my pajamas, right. and it would be, uh, you know, not a lot of money, but enough to keep me going. And, and it's been just great because broadcasting is such a... Uh, a kind of a doggy dog competitive world. Voiceover, as it turns out, is a very supportive, encouraging community, and uh, just really loving the people and the relationships I'm I'm finding there. Okay, so so basically, this is just you, right? I mean, yeah, Bill, go here. Are you building like an ecosystem or anything? No, for it, it's or? pretty much just me. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> now, I mean, now I'm I've not sure, really. And yeah. I've chosen to to do most of my marketing, all of my marketing, on social media. So, okay, you know, I, I was an early adopter. I, I signed on to Twitter in 07 and Ooh. and uh, really, you know, tried yeah. to. LinkedIn, I added all those as they come along, and it's working for me. It's really turning some jobs. Yeah, and so what are some of the lessons you learned along the way that might help other entrepreneurs? Oh, gosh. Uh, Especially pay, people working on their personal brand, maybe, I, too. See, I, yeah. I blog five days a week for the voiceover community, and, and I found that paying it forward really reaps its own dividends. Um, just offering free information, experience, links, anytime I can, and it comes back to you many-fold over the years. Okay, and the give first mentality, yep. I like that. It makes a lot, that's a, a lot of things around here run too. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's get into your gadgets. So, I mean, you got the, you got the Microsoft Surface here. Microsoft what, Surface. Uh, like throughout time, like what were some of your favorite, do you have like a Newton or anything back in the day? Oh, or oh, like, do uh, you have a bunch anybody, of cool gadgets you can yeah, reminisce uh, does about? Anybody or? remember um, Magic, uh, General Magic? Remember that? Anybody remember mm, General Magic? Anyone uh, that? Yeah, hey, how about that? What is it? What is it? The, well, it was one of the... Right, and they, they formed their own business, and they came out with really one of the first, um, uh, you know, like a Newton. And you still have it? Uh, oh, yeah. It's oh, about that eBay thick, gold, and, you yeah. know, it's about that big, but it was one of the first, one of the first ones to come out. And then, of course, you know, a, a pilot, and I, I've, I've used those all along, and okay. yeah, all that stuff. Well, what's your fancy now? What app and tablet is uh, Well, I, I have an iPad. I have an Android tablet, a Mic Motorola Zoom. I okay. have a um, Nexus 7, uh, Google, and I've got the... Uh, uh, the RT okay. Surface. You brought the Surface with you. Is your favorite or um, you just I'm, newest? I'm or? really trying to discover all I can do, and I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, it seems like it actually seems like a really cool product. I haven't yep. played with one very much, but um, you know, I use I use tablets all the time, and I didn't think I would actually at first. I was like, ah, smack, that'd right. be fine, right. you know. So now I'm just waiting to see what happens with uh, with Microsoft and with uh, Apple and with Android. Now Facebook came out with their phone today. Um, and I'm waiting to see what happens this year. I'm so invested in the in the iPhone and all its apps, and, and yeah. uh, that I'm don't really want to leave that. But I keep seeing Sam, Samsung come on pretty strong. So yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Let's see what happens. All right. So what all those other suits that are hanging out in the newsrooms? <laughs> do they do they realize that it's going to be a lot of transition period? Oh, do you gosh. think um, News Aid is going to be on top of that, or like what are you guys doing? We're to really try to trying. Our, in the audience is our uh, director of digital media, Chris Way, right here with the iPhone. Yeah. Um, 
Chris is a genius, and he's kind of dragged us kicking and screaming into the 21st century, and we have to. There's just no way. I mean, uh, the generation that's coming up doesn't wait until 5, 6, or 11 right. to watch the news. They get it on their smartphone and their tablets or both at the yeah. same time or while they're watching the news, all three. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we really have to. We have a trusted brand. We have, a, we have good loyalty, and we have good content. And how do you translate that into the new world and monetize it? That is the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, so have you guys, um, I, I heard Mike Cow was saying maybe that you're starting to look at maybe using wedgies or any of the other downtown companies. Like, would you have any loyalty to the companies down here if it made sense? Love to. I, mean, yeah. I, I haven't been aware. I haven't sat down with Mike long enough to, to hear about that. Okay. But, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing to this audience, and that is that I'm trying to get our boss, and I've got, finally got him agreed to do this, to do Google Hangouts during our all-important May sweeps period. So okay. we have investigative stories, and we're going to build off of those at the end of the newscast. We're going to invite people to a Google Hangout uh, after the news and, and carry that into the newsroom yeah. and bring in experts. And we'd invite you all to join us. My boss has a hard time with Google Hangouts because whenever we do them, uh, we end up with people from Belgium and Australia and Boston. <laughs> And he wants local Google people. He wants yeah. people from, from this community to come forward and join us. So I ask you to join us, and, and I'll try to pass that word out through this community as to when you can okay. help us, because we really want local people to join us. Yeah, and afterwards, you can send me any info you have. Yeah. I'll put it up here on things. So high five, man. Good right, job on that. <laughs> like it. Okay, so um, obviously you guys are working hard, but does it make you worried at all about uh, how fast people are getting info? Because this is kind of this common theme, yeah, well, and I'd be curious about if you're worried about the quality. It brings up, yeah, it brings up the whole idea of what journalism really is, and and it's one of the few professions that doesn't have any accrediting or certification. Right, like a right. bar or, a, you know, in nurses, welders, oh, yeah, it's, it's teachers, they all have, that, yeah. you know, an accreditation or, or certifying a point. And, and journalists don't. I mean, any blogger can call themselves a journalist and who's going to call them on it? I mean, some of them are really good and probably would qualify as journalists, yeah. but others... I uh, call myself a news anchor, yeah, you know? There you like, go. Well, I don't know. <laughs> It's just and, that easy now, you and, know. Uh, and by the same token, I've never had a journalism class in my whole life, you know. So, right. so uh, I've, I've kind of propped myself up. I started on radio and then worked my way up. So, you know, anybody can call themselves a journalist, but but it does matter. It does matter right. that you that you confirm your facts and that you vet your your interviews and and that you write it well. And because good content is still appreciated. Yeah. And that's what the legacy news media outlets are are still doing. They just don't know how to put it into the digital universe. Right. And I definitely see that too. I think that there's going to be that time where we all get the information first and then we realize how mm -hmm. poor it is and slowly start to trust right. a more trusted brand, which well, is a good place for eight news now to like you like know, the like the landing of it. that plane in the middle of the river in New York City. I mean the first guy there with a picture was, you know, with a guy with an iPhone. But uh, you know, I think T V news still does some things better than anybody else. And one of those things is live coverage of happening events right, that are developing as, as you go. Um, and people still like to feel and see that and hear that uh, that live coverage. And I think there's a place for it, but uh, the heyday of TV is is past. <laughs> yeah, but it'll be a fun new a new world, you know. And I think it um, I think it's cool that you came to talk to us. I'm oh. glad you're kind of exploring what's going on you around bet. here. And uh, you know, it's real special to all of us. And it's great to see someone like you coming by. So thank you so much My for coming out. Thank I you. appreciate it, Dave. Right. So thank you guys. <laughs> all right. For those more adventurous tea drinkers or those looking to expand their drinking palate, attend the first class of the Las Vegas Tea Series at the Trifecta Gallery on the 11th. Join them as they explore puree teas from what they are exactly to how they are processed. The class starts at 6 p.m. and be sure to register on Skillshare.com. That evening, head to Beauty Bar to hear Purity Ring Live. This Canadian electro duo will be coming through on their North American tour. They are most well known for their song Lofty Cries. The show kicks off at 9 p.m. and tickets are available on TicketCake.com. And it's that time again, so join us for this April Streets Festival on the 13th, aka Second Saturday. This ever-growing festival kicks off inside the El Cortez and join us for food, fun, and music starting at 6 p.m. Have an idea to create the next startup phenomenon but don't know where to start? Sign up for the first Start You Up Boot Camp at Work in Progress on April the 20th from 1 to 5 p.m. Whether you're a business person, designer, or developer, start your own... Start, you, start up boot camp will get you from startup idea to startup ready in just four hours. Tickets are limited, and for more details, check out lvchamber.com. Last week, I talked a bit about Robo Day. Here to talk a bit more about that is Allison. All right, Allison, take it away. Hi. Uh, well, Robo Day is a free robotics education expo. We're going to be happening on Saturday, April 13th. We're going to be kicking off at 11 a.m. We're going to have a large interactive area where you can interact and learn about robots. You'll see local efforts such as Pololu Robotics. Um, 
uh, Sin Shop is going to be there and possibly remotive. Okay. Uh, we're going to be announcing our keynote speaker at 1 p.m., who is an amazing genius from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Right. He's going to be giving us a glimpse into the next five years of robotics at NASA. Uh, you can also see the largest robotics manufacturer, KUKA. And we're also going to be uh, showcasing some of the education efforts that are going on. Uh, our, research, our research has shown that... Um, Cities who embrace robotics have increased um, their graduation rate, as well as encouraging students to pursue higher education um, careers. Okay. So Ticket uh, uh, tickets are free on TicketCake.com. Okay. It's going to be at the CSN campus on Cheyenne Avenue. Okay, Saturday, you said? Saturday, yes. Okay, Saturday the... April 13th. April 13th. Okay, all right, everybody, check it out. We love robots. <laughs> all right, and that's it. Thank you guys for coming out to episode 17. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, Remember like a flashback Vegas Tech Don't forget to spell it with the hashtag